All right, so we've seen our basic structures in there. Let's have a look how we can start creating something as well. We'll start by creating a parameter. I want to see something on my screen. How can I do this? Well, you can say, well, I need to know all the predefined definitions. I don't like to remember all of these things. So I'm going to use snippets. I can insert a snippet in there. Of course, I can make my own snippets, Visual Studio. It's free for you to do. And we have some snippets already for DIS as well. So you can find DIS, you can make your own snippets as well. Let's hit the DIS. Different types of XMLs that I can make. In this case, we're going to work on protocols. And protocols, I'm going to use patterns. And for instance, I would like to make a displayed patterns. And the nice thing about the snippets is that it will highlight the components that you need to change or might want to change. And you can just hit the tab key on your keyboard to move along these different items. As soon as you enter, that's what you apply to me. Still feel free to change it afterwards. So I'm going to make my first part. I'm going to give it a unique ID, ID number 10. I'm not going to make it trendable, so it's not going to be available yet on my trend template. I'm going to give it a internal name. Name is the same as an internal variable name. Now, I've already mentioned that we can use quick actions and that's C sharp. So I'm going to keep that in mind. We can have some standards or you can have some house rules on how to define your variable names in C sharp language as well. And these names can be linked with my param that I create. For instance, in my logic, in my quick action, I would like to retrieve the value that is inside this param. So you can phrase your name, your internal name, using those same house rules. Now, in my case, um, test purpose, I'm just going to call this my param. Doesn't really make sense, but it's just as an example. Now, my description should be very clear, user-friendly, um, to the point, basically, because that's what's going to be displayed on screen. I don't want to make gigantic text in there, and I don't want it to confuse the person looking at it. So I'm going to call this, similar to my name, this is my parameter. Again, real developments, it should have clearer purpose. Now, when I hit the tab, I'm getting into a section, not sure if you can clearly see it, but we're in this subtext section. This is a bit more information about this parameter. So it should help the person using your development to know what it actually represents. So I'm going to call this, this is a test parameter to help me develop my first driver. Now, the next component in here is the type. By default, my display pattern, remember I selected my sn snippet and I chose displayed pattern, will be a read type. What is a read type? Well, on screen, I'm going to show a read-only component. That doesn't mean that I'm limited. I can still set the value. I have to set the value, otherwise on screen, I will not see anything. So if I would quickly switch to my data miner and use uh, my Kubernetes example here. I can go to a data page. Well, all these parameters that we see here, they are all read parameters. This box where I can type in something, that's a write component. So it's a writable parameter. This value has to be set in this parameter. So it's not because of type read that I cannot update it with a value. In logic, I can still update it with a different value. Let's shift back to our first parameter. I will keep this as a read component, so it will 
displayed as a read component, I can read or keep this as a uh, numeric value. So I will eventually end up with a number displayed. I've already mentioned it, number displayed. Well, there is actually a big difference between my how I will interpret something. I will see it as a number internally and how I will see it on screen. Now, I can make it a different thing. Let's first enter this one. So I'm hitting the enter button. I have my first param. I've kept it as a number internally. I've made sure it was displayed. Simply selected the snippet. So the art display is true. I'll give you a small note on this a bit later. Measurement is number. Now imagine I do want to display it differently. Maybe I want to display an analog bar somehow. I want to have a nice display. Now we have some built-in lists in here as well. We, that will help you. This is a feature that exists. This is a predefined uh, functionality. So you can see I can choose my number again, or I can say, well, this is a progress bar, or I'm going to use this as a analog bar. In my case, I will choose my analog bar. Now imagine an analog bar that has a beginning and an end. So I will probably need to define my beginning and end as well. So I will know where in my analog bar, in my LED bar, where is my current value. This is purely display. Could be internal as well, once to set limitations. But on display, my analog bar means I will need to do something in my display. So that's where I come to RT display. What does this actually mean? Well, I'm going to make it available at runtime. It's going to be available outside of my protocol at runtime. Other modules, other parts of data miner can access this. If only my protocol requires this information, I'm going to set this to false or even leave this out entirely. For instance, the predefined parameter for the after startup sequence, it doesn't even have an internal reference. It's just a dummy component, so I can trigger my quick action. It doesn't need to be displayed, so that display indication is not in there as well. Could be that you want to keep a value internally, in that case, you do need your internal definition. See this value as something. And I'm not going to define display and measurement. As soon as you are going to display it, even if it's not on the screen, make it available for another module. I will require my measurement as well. How should you, as a remote component, view this? Internally, data miner is going to use it as a number, but on screen, for instance, I'm going to put it on a page. On screen, you should turn this into an analog bar. After display tree. Now, remember, I said analog, it will have a beginning, I will have an end. How will I define this? Well, let's have a look what we have in here. You can find here a range. So let's go and look what's inside the range. Of course, I have my low. Let's just use zero in this case. And I have my high, and I will put this to 10. Now, usually when you have an analog bar, you want to have a unit linked to it as well. What am I representing? Is it a temperature? Or is it the amount of errors that we have? We need to make a sense out of this. So let's see if we can add units in here as well. Let's see units. And again, I get a list of units that I have. Let's search if I can add some errors. Let's use errors in here. So my bottom is going to, in my example now, it's going to show an amount of errors using an analog bar between 0 and 10. But I'm not 
indicating where to show it yet. So if I would publish this on my system, I would not see anything. There's no page, there's no data page. It's available, this bottom is available, but it's not shown on my card. How do I add this? Well, you can see, well, it's again on display and I can go and look what is in here and maybe position or something. But when you want to move positions, you don't want to fumble around in the XML code. And that's why we have Display Editor. So let's go and click on the Display Editor. Now, by default, we always indicate a general page. And there's an indication here because we haven't added any parameters on this page. It's still a blank page. And in Dataminer, blank pages are ignored. You will not see them. So to get my first param in there, I'm going to select my param from the params list and move it somewhere on my page. Imagine I don't like the name general, although you can again have house rules. You should always have a general uh, page or maybe you have a house rule saying it should be a main page. If you don't want the general, you can still rename it by right clicking pick, rename, and maybe you should always have a main page. Now, it could be that you want to have some extra pages. Maybe you want to have some nice layout. I'm going to add a separator, and then I'm going to have some extra data-specific pages. Not, now, just going to call it data. Again, it can be data-specific pages. Now, imagine that on my main page, I will show my key functionality. So whatever this data source or this development must do, the key information is displayed on my general or main page. But of course, I also need to have that available on that data specific page. Then do I need to make my parameter twice? It would not make sense because this is purely on my display and it's the same parameter. So I can just select my same parameter. So you can see it's grayed out because it's used already somewhere on the page. I can select that bottom and again, just move it somewhere on your page. Now let's apply this change and see what happens in my code. I still have my parameter and now I have a position information in here as well. I have my main page located on a specific position in my page, and I have my data page. Now, maybe I don't want this type of layout. I want to shift things around. I can again go to Display Editor on my data page. I want it to be moved on another column. Now, when I will publish this, having just one parameter, it will just centerize it in the middle. But imagine you have multiple parameters, you might want to shift your layout. Dragging and dropping will help a lot. So you don't need to change things in the code itself. And we've already been doing a few things in this parameter. We have set my header in my protocol maybe it's time to start seeing something although there will not be any data in there i will see my parameter itself now how do i get my information in there i can store my xml file somewhere and upload it in my system or i can make sure that my dis information or my dis setup is linked to my um, data miner agent and then i can basically look what agent and publish this one. This will do the same thing as uploading my XML file. So let's go and hit the publish button and then look what will happen on the other side. So we'll select our data miner setup again, go to apps, look for protocols and templates, and we see here our test protocol. And that's the name that we have used in our test protocol. When I select this, I see I have my version 1001. So you see that publish button really works the same as I would use the protocols and templates 
upload and upload the XML file or even upload a package itself. But as this is my first development, I'm still busy doing something. I have my connection with my setup. I can easily just hit publish, look at the result, and then continue my development. So at this stage, the only thing I have is my protocol. Now let's make a element or we'll make a new view in here. So this is my test development, and I'm going to make a new element. My element, I'm going to select my test protocol. And as you can see, I don't have any connection properties here. Why? Well, because I define it as a virtual development. I will not interact with any remote data sources. I don't need to set up an HTTP connection. This is all purely internal. So for instance, this could be a managing component of other elements inside my system. Now let's hit the create button. Let me just undock so you can clearly see what I'm doing. So here I have my create button and this will create my first element. Now, as I expected, I have my parameter displayed. I have a analog bar with a range from 0 to 10 without any information. So when you see not initialized, it means there's no data in there. There never was. So since I started up my element, nothing entered in there. I can add, for instance, an exceptional value in there and saying, well, this data that you're trying to put in there, well, it's not available. It could be that I have a configuration in my setup. Um, I'm going to only pull this information when you, as a user, has indicated you should start receiving this information. If not, then I'm going to indicate that it's not available. In that case, I'm setting the value not available and I'm putting it grayed out. Not initialized is, is unique because it means there's really nothing in there. Empty. 